Now, live from the headquarters of Chat Night Africa, Divine Shamika. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Chat Night Africa. If you live in a country where there is an armed uprising, for independence, the content of this broadcast will interest you. Today, the topic is Namibia's struggle for independence. What lessons? On the line from Namibia is Thomas Kashiludika Taliko. Ladies and gentlemen, join me now in welcoming live from Windwork, that is the capital of Namibia, Brother Thomas Taliko Kashiludika. Thank you so much for availing me this opportunity uh, to talk about my country that I love so much, my pride and heritage, that is Namibia. My name is Thomas Taliko Kashidulika. Thank you for availing me this opportunity. Mr. Kashiludika, did I pronounce your name right? Kashidulika. Okay, beautiful. Thank you for that correction. Right. Walk me through the process pre-independence or pre-independent Namibia. Right. Who was fighting for independence and who led the fight? Well, well Namibia fought a series of events uh, before independence against the, the very first one is against the British rule, then into the Germans and then the South Africans. Of course, uh, uh, many different characters uh, led the Namibian struggle. Uh, I can mention so many, I'm talking about the Mahareros, the Henrik Bed Boys, we're talking about uh, the Kings, which is uh, the King Mandume and the Eden Fire of the Kwanyamas, uh, Pingana, you know, or oh, then many other Kings and uh, many other indigenous parties that played, played uh, part of the liberation struggle of Namibia. Life in Namibia before independence uh, was lifeless lawless, bloody, and dense for the black majority, if I may say. The Namibian indigenous people held the imperialist, the imperialist Germans and later colonialist troops of South Africa at bay for many years. And this, and this somehow slowed down the pace of dispossession and the call to freedom for the, for the Namibian people. Just to give you a, a little background of um, the exact beginning of all this, the war of resistance against the colonial rule took place around the 18th, 1892 to 1932 against the Imperial Germans under the leadership of uh, General Lothar van Trotter and those before him and later the Union government of South Africa and before then there was an involvement of the British rule too. General van Trotter replaced uh, Captain Theodore Ludwig. Um, van Trotter's uh, mandate was to execute the extermination order, which literally meant there was no room for both Europeans and Africans in, in the white owned areas. And this meant the entirety, the entirety of Southern and Central Namibia, the native areas of the people of the Nama, Damara, and the Herero people. Uh, during the 1960s, 
most of the African countries had gained independence except for Namibia. That's why Namibia sometimes is stamped as the last colony in Africa. And the, country, the country's opulent endowment in the minor resources such as the uranium, lithium, gold, copper, and diamonds was the motivation that encouraged and most motivated South Africa to try and hold on to Namibia for many years of revolution. We're talking about 1960 to 1990. The South Africa apartheid laws extended to Namibia and prevented black Namibians from having any political rights as well as restricted social and economic freedom. The aim of South Africa rule over Namibia was to exploit the minor rights and resources of Namibia. Around 1918, Namibia was placed under, under the League of Nation mandate system with Britain, Britain charged with the supervisory responsibilities. In turn, uh, Britain delegated the, responsib the responsibilities to South Africa, who in accordance with the mandate, statutes pledged to promote the utmost material and moral well-being and social progress of the inhabitants of the territory, which are the Namibian people. However, South Africa ad administered Namibia for the exclusive benefit of the white minority, bringing, bringing in mainly poor, landless white, uh, white farmers from South Africa to farm land seized from the indigenous Namibian people. The league at this stage did little to nothing to monitor the South African measures in Namibia. The South African um, infiltration crushed the existing indigenous people resistance from the Kwanyama kingdom uh, under the rule of Mandome and Demfayo, the Bondo Swats, um, the Nama people under the Abraham uh, Morris, the Kwame people under the chief uh, Ipumbu, uh, you know, through very advanced um, bombardments and massacres of these communities, you know, the divide and conquer rule was the presence. That is the background of our history. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Brother uh, Thomas. Uh, you're con uh, connecting live, I have to tell the audience, you're connecting live from the beautiful country of uh, Namibia. Now, who led the last stage of the independence fight against the colonial rule of South Africa? We are talking about the, the founding father, the doctor himself, Dr. Sam Safishuna Nyoma, who is the current founding father of the, of the Republic of Namibia. Dr. Sam Nyoma led the People Liberation Army of Namibia, which is a liberation movement formed uh, under the wing of the Swapo Party, which is the Southwest Africa People Organization. Swapo Party of Namibia, which is the political party that began the liberation movement in Namibia, which was formerly known as Southwest Africa, which uh, committed to the liberation struggle of Namibia and advocated immediate Namibian independence from South Africa and became the country's leading party following independence in 1990 to date. When uh, Dr. Sam Njoma led the uh, fight against uh, South African colonial rule, I am sure the white minority government in South Africa called him a terrorist. What was he called in Namibia? You know, he was a, in Namibia, he was a hero. You know, he's a people's person. You know, he, he took the course of, 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 Namibian, of Namibia personally, you know, to bring us independence and what we have today. So he was a hero. He was our father figure. And till to this day, he still remains the father figure of the Namibian nation. Well, the, I looked at the definition of terrorism, and it says anybody who tries to gain uh, some sort of uh, political um, result uh, using arms is a terrorist. Right. He was using arms. Well, you have to understand that uh, before Swapo um, and the People Liberation Army and Amiga took up arms, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of um, 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 correspondence between Namibia and, and Namibia and the international community, and um, uh, South Africa was very much adamant to giving up the hold and rights they have over Namibia, which is a complete different territory from theirs. So. With all this sort, uh, there was nothing else but to take, it, to take arms because the Namibian people believed in standing up for their rights and fighting for what is theirs. 
before inviting you to this platform, um, uh, Thomas, I looked at the various independence um, fighting groups um, in Africa. Let me take, for example, uh, Liberia. Let me take that as, as a clear example. There were so many rebel factions um, fighting the central government, necessarily not for independence, because Liberia was already then an independent country. But usually, um, from the information I gathered, the rebel factions tormented their populations, tortured them, killed them, slaughtered them in some cases, killed women, child soldiers. Tell me a little bit about the armed wing of SWAPO, led by Dr. Sam Nujoma. Uh, how did he conduct himself with the population, interacting with the population? Um, I believe that the interaction with the population was very, um, very, was very sincere, if I may put it that way. It was um, both the population and the rebel understood the cause for the, for, for the movement. They understood what we were fighting for. And many times the population actually came to the aid of the liberation movement to support in any way, be it food, you know, sometimes be it shelter, sometimes be it um, um, a sick bay literally so the population was very supportive it was a support system of the plan which is the people liberation army of namibia not only information was but emotionally and spiritually exactly and uh, many times a source of food the communities will sacrifice their livestock you know to make sure that the the the, the movement were fed uh, because uh, the liberation people were fighting from angola uh, in the middle of norway far from their homes and many times when they are mission into the country um, they are left to, 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 to benefit and um, uh, um, rely on the community. And, most, and entirely the community understood the cause because the community was already, was already you know, standing the, the harsh um, condition and treatment of the, the, colonial, the colonial regime. So the, the communities would sacrifice their livestock and food in general for the freedom fighters. This was always done, especially in secret, because it was not... Um, supposed to be very transparent information. And the communities understood the cause and, and did everything to support uh, the liberation movement and the freedom fighters. Of course, there were those who um, sided with the uh, colonial masters, but sometimes they did it uh, because of fear. If I got too clearly, you said there were Namibians who even though oppressed, sided with the white uh, minority rule from South Africa, why would they do that? If Sam Njoma was such a father, if he incarnated the aspirations of Namibians? Um, um, like I said earlier, it was most of the time it was done in fear. You know, you, you, are, you are left with either losing your family, your lives, your livelihood, uh, and you are presented with this incentive that is either you lose your life and family, Lose, lose your livelihood for supporters. So, so many times, some did it in, in fear, but there were also those factions who just didn't believe in the liberation movement of the country, who uh, who rather stood with the colonial masters and believed uh, believed their masters as a as a better rule, even given the extortions and given given the segregation and given the 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 the, the harsh condition of the colonial unequal right to the uh, sphere yeah you never have a situation that everybody follows the same uh, the same route how did right. um, uh, sam nunjoma at the time a quote a rebel leader let me just call that for now you know so that we 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 understand the context how did he treat those who differed with him who said no you you want to fight for independence probably we don't like the way you're fighting Oh, we don't want the independence. How did he deal with such cases? Well, um, um, uh, uh, if you follow very well in Africa, especially, um, there's always been certain, certain informations of how to deal with those who resisted, um, uh, re resisted the majority call, which sometimes was believed to be the right thing to do um especially those who gave away information to the opponent um to defeat to, to defeat uh the current uh, liberation movement uh, uh, 
I don't believe he I don't believe he behaved in a, in any manner that was very detrimental to the cause um, of the struggle. I, th I believe he believed uh, he behaved in a way that fathomed and carried the struggle further. So I would say Nyoma played in a, a very active role as a leader of the liberation movement. Uh, you know, at such places as the United Nations. You know. Uh, which got the United Nations to re recognize Swapo as a legitimate representative of the Namibian people. Nyoma became widely known throughout the international community for his flaming speeches denouncing the rule of the colonial masters in Namibia and the presence of the colonial um, segre segregation uh, uh, governance in Namibia um, and calling for an end to South African domination for Namibia and to all foreign, ex foreign exploitation. That has been his uh, mandate, that has been his call, that has been his personality, you know. And, and a, a, a lot of people, to Namibia or Africa. A, a lot of uh, people or separatist movements in Africa have tried and failed. Um, the Biafran example stands out, and many others, others still struggling uh, to break away from the mainland. Um, what is it that facilitated um, Swapo uh, winning the independence? What, what, what did they do different that others today are not doing? In your point, I mean, in your, in your opinion. Is that post independence or after independence? I mean, uh, uh, independence? yeah, during, during, the, during the struggle in, in Namibia. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just hear your question again. Sorry, I didn't get it right. Let me just get your question again. Sorry. Okay. You're getting me, right? Are you hearing me? I can hear you clearly now. Okay. The question I'm asking you is, other independence uh, movements have, across Africa, tried and failed. Uh, the case of uh, Biafra stands out. What is it, uh, what is it that uh, Dr. Sanjoma do to succeed? What, what did he do that, in your view, others are doing and are failing? Um, I think uh, one of his approach was to unite the people of Namibia, which were very, which were, which were very, you know, divided as the as the principle by the colonial, and um, uniting a community to understand that we need to stand against all odds to fight for our freedom. That is one of his, that, that, I feel like that, that's one of the, the traits that um, 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 somehow. You know, helped the liberation movement, and um, g given the condition, given the condition and the history of our country, to, to be honest, you know, there was nothing else left within us but to fight for what is ours, whether resources, you know, rights, you know, everything that belongs to Namibia. We understood that you know we have to be part of it. What were the countries that supported? Uh... Dr. Sam Njuma in the fight for independence against South Africa? Uh, we're talking the likes of uh, Soviet Union, uh, Russia today, you know, African countries like Angola. We can never, you know, take away anything from Angola and Zambia. We, we fought our war from those countries, from uh, Angola and uh, Zambia. Those were, those were the countries that, you know, you know um, afforded us um, the place to host bases, you know, accommodate accommodate our civilians and uh, refugees and uh, the liberation movement. We're talking about Tanzania, and um, we're talking about also countries like South Africa supported us. With, we're talking about uh, European countries as um, as um, um, the GDR, uh, uh, Germany back then. The GDR uh, also, you know, um, stood with us uh, at some point. We can't take away anything from Cuba. Cuba stood stood with us to the end. So is so the Soviet Union. Those are countries uh, I would love to mention. And other African countries like Congo, um, who also uh, accommodated our people. Um, countries, countries like Nigeria as well, did a part. And many other, many other African countries. Um, African it is countries remarkable, uh, uh, Brother Kash, uh, Kashidulika, that all these countries rallied in support for Dr. Sam Njoma and his fight against um, uh, the uh, colonial rule from South Africa. Um, I, I know you say they hosted the refugees and so on. In what other forms did these countries support um, uh, the, let me call it rebel movement against uh, South Africa? Well, 
we were talking about, um, for instance, education, you know, education and training of, of, of the militants, uh, providing logistics such as food, uh, medicine, clothing, you know, all kinds of welfare, really, you know, um, 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 uh, some scholarships and, uh, and bursaries to, to some of our comrades who needed to study and understand the liberation, come back and plow back into the community. You are watching Voices of Africa at chat night and live from the beautiful Southern African country of Namibia is our guest, Taliko Thomas Kashidulika. Right, you got it right. <laughs> right. You can see that I'm taking a lot of time to pronounce your name. Right. It's an African Before name. we go to the second part of this uh, broadcast, I am inviting people. You can now dial in and ask your questions. The number is 240-603-7367. 240-603-7367. If you have a question, or you can type the question and I'll read the question to our guest, we would also like to inform you that we are broadcasting this show live through YouTube and the channel is Chat Night Africa. It's also airing live on our brand new broadcast website, www.chatnightafrica.net. Let's fast forward to the day of independence. That must have been a great day for all of you Namibians, Mr. Ataliko. Very much. It was a festival, a, a mood, and, and it, it it lasted us for many years, as I could remember. You know, um, it, it was definitely a, a you know a breath of fresh air filled with jubilation and uh, ululations uh, from all corners of this country. You know, it was a new beginning to come. You know, we can start all over and be happy and equally be ourselves in a land that took so much blood with it to bring us this very moment. So the this celebration went on for a very long time. People couldn't fathom that. They now live in an independent Namibia, equal rights and all, you know, no white masters, no travel passes like in the past, no curfew, no segregation. You know, one can be anywhere and everywhere they want to be. The long suffering of our people is being replaced with some happy, with some with happiness and joy. And for this day on, our people have a chance to shape their own future. That was really the, the theme for our struggle. Well, uh, Mr. Taliko, before we continue, I'd like to invite you to watch a spectacular cultural group from Cameroon. This is the Subi Sensations of Oku in Cameroon. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
This is Voices of Africa at Chat Night. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, join me again in welcoming to the platform Mr. Taliko Thomas Kashidulika. Thank you so much. How did you, you so like that uh, traditional the Juju Dan Subi sensations of Oku in Cameroon? Something very different, and, and that's what we appreciate about Africa. Africa is very diverse. It's, you know, different cultures, different people, and Africa brings you everything that's different all the time. That's also something very nice to see. The conductor of that group has been the leader conducting the group for 30, 30 long years. Anyway, let's go get back to our, <laughs> to our discussions. We'd like to have um, traditional troops from Namibia also. I hope that um, you will facilitate that for us at um, Chat Night Africa. Very sure, very sure. I'll do that. I'll bring it for you. We have a lot to offer as Namibians, and sometimes people don't see this. Um, uh, um, but I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll provide it. I'll provide it. Thank you for that promise, sir. Some people are of the opinion that liberation leaders, um, struggle leaders, don't always make good leaders. They don't always translate into democratic leadership when eventually they get independence. What has been the case in Namibia, your beautiful country, when it became clear, when Sam Nujoma raised his hand, swearing to defend the constitutions, the constitution uh, of the people of uh, uh, Namibia? How has life been? How has life been for Namibia after, after independence? Well, well, you know, the struggle continues. You were struggling against what? You have independence. <laughs> the struggle, the, the, well, we are no longer in the bush, right? We have democracy right now, but we have economic struggles, you know, just like any other free countries. Um, of course, you know, the first 10, 10 years of independence, you know, I don't believe that anybody believed to have everything promised, promise arrive, arrive right away, you know? And at this very moment, of course, not everything is 100%. You know, it was going to take us some time uh, to get us to to all those realizations. You know, some some thought immediately, but I, I but it, you know, it's going to take us some time. I think the first ten years after independence, we were still clouded by some form of uh, illusion, uh, because I don't believe anyone or anyone was thinking beyond the pride and the feeling of just being independent. But after the period of twenty to thirty years, uh, we are still dealing with colonial enactments, land and commercial activities that still sit in the hands of the minority, which is the whites. And uh, the gap between rich and poor, you know, sure the economic, sure the economic um, uh, prison kind of thing, and um, you know, sure not what we desired, but uh, I guess we we fight on. What what did the father of the nation of Namibia, that's uh, Dr. Sami Joma, what did he promise apart from just saying, well, we'll be independent from South Africa? What other promises did he make to the people? And to what extent did he meet those promises when he became president? I mean, I mean he promised a lot, you know, and um, we, we can't hold him uh, wholly responsible for some of these promises. Um, at the end of the day, we are a community, and as a community, we need to work together to, 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 to bring, bring to life some of those dreams. And uh, some of those dreams were equal opportunity, job-wise, you know, economic freedom, um, equal rights, you know, no racial segregation, you know, um, land to the people. And the land issue is still, a, is still a very serious issue in Namibia at the moment, given the fact that uh, the majority of the land is still owned uh, by the minority, which is why. Mr. Kashidulika, the reason I ask you that question is they say a hungry man is an angry man. When the stomach needs food, the stomach doesn't care whether food is not, isn't in there because you're still cultivating the farms or you're still planting the crops. The stomach needs food. It needs it now. You need to eat. And it seems to me if at some point Namibians were not getting the jobs that they thought they would have after independence was achieved, then it's just but not natural that Dr. Sam Njoma be held accountable. I mean, after independence, uh, Dr. Samuel did has a cabinet or leadership in place 
to bring some of these dreams to life and um and uh, um, um of course some of some of the dreams came to life some of it didn't um uh, we still face uh, a very wide gap between the poor and the rich you know we still have a land issue we still have sanitation we still have a uh, sandy towns you know the fight really the fight is, is really still eminent but uh democracy is what we have at the moment we have voice and freedom of expression to be able to express ourselves and to say you know what after 30 years we are still facing with uh some of these uh issues uh, and the time is now and uh we need to make a difference um of course he can be held accountable in it somewhat but um um i think he did his part and he, he passed on the button um to the next leadership to fight on you know come on this is a man who has been fighting since the 1960s for this very I, I have to say that um I mean, credit to him, he did not uh, hang on to power like others would do, like uh, um, Robert, Robert Mugabe, Mugabe did, like uh, Yuri Museveni did, uh, like many others across Africa did. He did not hang on to power, we, we, which is credit to him. We have to give him that credit. But what typically we see in Africa is when people carry a country into independence, then you have a new elite who are the former freedom fighters they say now is our own turn we're suffering in the bush tell me what was the situation in namibia you didn't didn't you also have some nujoma with a new elite this time around not south african uh, not south africans but uh, the new namibian elite composed of former freedom fighters who say you know what we've got to be minister of this i've got to be general director general of this i've got to be minister of defense i've got to be minister of justice what was the situation what was the situation in namibia after independence i mean uh very very well so because uh, if you look at the leadership the leadership compri uh, com comprise or encompass very much uh freedom, very much the freedom fighters who uh who comes from the older generation who stood the fight against liberation until today till to, till today if you if you look at our parliament these are still the same people who are still in power so things are now a little bit changing where we have a combination of the young people coming in uh, the youth is rising up and want their voice heard but uh, the majority is really still the the cadres coming from um, the, the old generation um, um somewhat believe that uh, they believe maybe they believe they are owed some form of uh, i don't know incentive maybe um uh, but um it's not beneficial to the governance of the country you know um, and I and I believe that uh, what Dr. Sam did in passing on the button to the next leadership, I feel many should. You are watching Voices of Africa at Chat Night Africa. The topic today, the Namibian independence struggle, what lessons? And we are now at the phase of... Um, the what lessons, what could other Africans learn? Now, somebody watching you or somebody who just heard on Namibia, heard about Namibia by looking at the map, why should somebody visit Namibia? If I wanted to come to Namibia, what are the things you're going to tell me to visit Namibia that should persuade me to visit Namibia, sir? I, I know that the meat that's roasted on the charcoal, uh, the right. fire, we call that in Cameroon, a uh, suya. Ah, uh, boy. I can't wait to come to Namibia to eat that. But what else? That said, what else are the things you would say that should be persuasive to people to come to Namibia as tourists? Just on a very simple, right? Just on a very simple surface, you know, um, our meat, you know, known as kapana, is one of the best best in the world. You know, in terms of quality and texture, I think at the moment we are the only African country who sells meat to the USA you know and that that is that is a that is that is a, that is very applausible and um come on namibia is also one of those countries where you have the desert meet the ocean that's the only time you sit in the world you know it's a very beautiful and unique country we have some of the, some of the oldest dunes you know uh, the atlantic ocean beautiful sceneries game life you know very cultural and diverse country but beyond that i think uh, namibia distinguishes itself through the characteristics of its constitution and uh, the policies that govern the country. First of all, the Namibian constitution provides for a multi-part democracy. 
and um, a government consist consisting of elected executives and uh, leg legislature and the ind independent judiciary. Namibia is aligned to promote international cooperation, uh, peace and security that is mandate just and mutual beneficial relations uh, among nations, respect for international law and treaty obligations, and the settlement of international dispute by peaceful means. And um, it's, it's a call for, for a living wage, central development, uh, planning, grassroots participation and protection of the environment, you know, prohibit, prohibiting um, things like discrimination on the basis of one sex and a call for legislation to ensure equal opportunity for women and for everybody in the country. That is why you should visit Namibia. It's a country that is very well welcoming and, um, and uh, we believe in the quest for Africa. I, I tell you what, sir, if I were the president of Namibia, I would make you the minister of tourism. Please, please do. <laughs> anyway, that, that, that leads me to this question. And I appreciate you telling us about the beautiful things about um, Namibia. What is it in Namibia that sets Namibia apart or aside that you wouldn't find in other African countries uh, post independence? Um, let, well, let, let's, let me juxtapose uh, that question. In, within uh, the context of the founding father. Political and, freedoms, for example. Right, uh, you know, the founding father played a very personal and active role in the liberation uh, struggle in Namibia, um, embodying the father figure of the struggle, rallying at the United Nations, which recognized Swapo as a legitimate representative of the Namibian people. I believe he stood the fight for his people. It became personal and not self-seeking. Nyoma has always referenced African leaders like um, uh, Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah, um, Kenneth Kaunda, Julius Nyerere, as his, op as his counterpart in the anti-colonial struggle, aligning himself with the icons of liberation. I believe in his quest, those were the char characters, you know, he tried to emulate those, those, those were, you know, those, what better it is to walk in the footsteps of those who have been there before. And I feel like um, um, that energy itself, that energy itself, it's very uh, emulatable. You are watching Voices of Africa. Uh, my guest, Thomas Taliko Kashidulika, will be right back. Time for us to take a quick trip to Ghana, to the political capital of Accra, to discover this group. Watch. <laughs> Chat night. My name is Sir Divine Chiamukong. I am in Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. You just watched the uh, cultural group called Casa Cultural Troupe, and the dance name is Wongo. 
Wongo is the traditional dance of Napdam people in the Upper East region of Ghana. It has been performed to give thanks to the ancestors for the protection of their crops for a bumper harvest since they are the main cereal farmers. They believe that birds used to destroy their crops, but they use a stone to hit the hole to scare the birds away and later realized that the sound was entertaining and um, could be followed by the, a traditional dance. And it became part and parcel of them to perform it during the festival, which normally comes um, in the month of uh, November. I am sure that if we went to Namibia, we will have traditional dances, which have a history um, behind what they do. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Charles Bogbire, I hope I pronounced the name, the leader of the uh, CASA group uh, in Ghana, and um, Mr. Foster Yimbil, Yimbil uh, Bogre for making those connections possible. Join me once more in welcoming Mr. Taliko Thomas Kashi Dulika from Windhoek, Namibia. Thank you so much, Kevin. That's, that's a very creative group from uh, Ghana, doing great stuff. Okay, <laughs> beautiful. And again, as I say, we look forward to um, having a dance troupe from uh, the uh, beautiful Republic of uh, Namibia. Is, it, is Namibia a federation or it's a centralized government? Namibia is a republic, so it's a, it's a centralized government. Okay, beautiful. Now, people are watching you. If you had to say something to Africans, uh, this show is going to be watched by lots of Africans uh, through our YouTube channel, Chat Night Africa, and also through our website, um, our broadcast website, chatnightafrica.net, and then, of course, on the broadcast website, Chat Night Africa. If you had a word for Africans, um, what would you tell them? Um, and this is, this is my word. Aluta, continue, my people. Let's continue to power on. We have to soldier on to fight for what is ours. It's not, going, it's not an easy battle, but uh, we need to be intentional with it. You know, we need to stay perseverance and we need to stay persistent. Um, and our message remains very clear. Africa is ours and we want every part of it to serve its people. Everything that is, is self-serving and not serving the people of the land, we don't want it. That is, that is the message for Africa. We want Africa to remain Africa for African, serving and developing Africa for, 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 for its future generations. What do you think is one of the things that hold Africans behind in terms of socio-economic and political development? I, I think, it's, I, I, I think it's, it's leadership. Leadership. I think we have a leadership uh, that fails to think beyond the box and a leadership that is very much dependent, too much dependent on the West, on the Western, uh, Western world, you know, that has, that has made us very dependent and reluctant to structure our very own policies, you know, to, to devise our own programs for our own people, you know, to run our own resources, to engineer our own programs for our own continent. That's well, one, one of the social cancers in Africa, um, is called corruption. It's described, uh, corruption is described as one of the social cancers in Africa. Tell me a little bit about Namibia. How do you guys fight corruption, especially in uh, public places? Well, um, Namibia has been in the media lately for, for very dubious um, corruption activities, uh, one of it being the Fisher scandal. I'm not sure if you, you have seen it. If you haven't, uh, I would... Uh, Ask you, to, I'll ask the audience to please watch the fish rot scandal on Al Jazeera. Al, Je Al Jazeera is an international news. Um, yeah, sure. Um, you know, which 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 took took the Namibian uh, people into storm, given the fact uh, of how the the resources has been handled, and it has been handled in a manner to benefit a very selected, very selected few and um it's a very it's a it, it, it's a very ill 
ill ill disease you know corruption is simply stealing stealing from your own people you know and uh and uh you know uh um having your having your your, your own people suffer because you have taken away what is theirs and what they need to benefit from so that is really an issue we we face all over africa uh, if africans can only just be honest and uh be very less greedy and uh, self-serving but uh, benefit and serve the very same people who put them in, in put them in power africa will be a better place thank you for letting us know that we'll be right back to get your last word this was designed to be a short broadcast for us to take a flight to your beautiful country in namibia to understand how the independence struggle went pre-independence post-independence the leadership of uh, the founding father of uh, Namibia, Dr. Sam Nijoma. We will be right back with Mr. Taliko Thomas Kachitulika. This is Voices of Africa. Time for us to celebrate those who have been celebrating their birthday today, those who did this week. It's a tradition we have adopted in or on this platform, Chat Night Africa. So if you're celebrating your wedding anniversary, or your birthday, let us know. A lot of people have my contacts, my coordinates. You can reach me through Messenger. You can reach me through my phone on Facebook, WhatsApp, through the website even. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now celebrate with those celebrating. to those uh, celebrating thank you so much brother Z roger fool for putting together that video ladies and gentlemen let's bring back uh, our friend taliko thomas kashidulika for his last word before we go right um well well thank you for the opportunity and um I hope the audience uh, got to to at least hear or learn something different and new about Namibia. Uh, Namibia is a very diff is a very beautiful country, very diverse, it's, and um, it's 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 few flight hours. You know, if you do ever get a chance, please visit our beautiful country, come and experience the results, the nature, the diverse uh, game life, uh, the dunes, our beautiful beaches. And our beautiful people. So if you do get a chance, come and visit us. I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Kashiludika. I, I keep missing that. <laughs> you have to train me. I have to do it a couple of times. Taliko Thomas, uh, 
Kashidulika. I think I got it right there this time. Go. There you go. There you go. I really, really appreciate you for coming on Voices of Africa at Chat there Night. You know, I believe that through you, we will make a lot of friends in Namibia. Please, uh, we are encouraging you, asking you to be our ambassador, Chat Night Africa ambassador in Namibia, especially in Windhoek. We want to make a lot of friends Yay. there. Thank you so much. I receive it. <laughs> thank you, sir. We appreciate you coming on the show. Right. Thank you. So thank you very much for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we wrap up this week's edition of Chat Night Africa. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you did learn something because the whole purpose of this broadcast has been what can we learn from each other? We learn from each other by connecting with each other. We can learn by staying where we are and not talking to each other. I don't mean talking at each other or talking over each other. I appreciate all of you watching this broadcast. My name is Sir Divine Chamakong. I want to thank my producer, who is thousands of miles away from where I am in the beautiful Nigerian city of Lagos, Mr. Z. Roger Fu, that's the guy producing this broadcast way out there in Nigeria, even though I'm in Washington, D.C., metropolitan area. That's how we say goodbye. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you again very, very, very soon. I'm coming. Coming to get down. I'm coming. I'm coming. Coming to dance. To dance. We're going to dance. We're gonna get down, we're gonna get down, we're gonna party, party hard, we're gonna book it, book it, work it, and when we jam, it's out of sight, this song right here, it's dynamite, I'm ready, I'm coming.